Amen. Well, this morning um, we're going to be starting a new uh, a new series, um, and I'm stinking excited in my heart. Um, you know, uh, sometimes there, you know the Bible tells us that the Word of God is useful to instruct, um, to correct, to rebuke, right? And sometimes we have to hear the word in those, you know, all different facets, and it's it's to be celebrated in all those ways. Um, the the heart of this 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 uh, message and series to me is really one of almost, if you could take this and mentally put this picture there, uh, of um, a really sweet teacher that is like showing you not just to the class. But like saying, hey, like a grandma, come here, honey, let me show you how to bake. Or uh, your, your grandpa showing you how, maybe you don't have this, but just this picture, a, a really sweet grandpa showing you how to change the oil and you put that socket on there and it slips off and he says, now, buddy, now, or you're trying to put the, the wheels back on and you tighten one bolt down and he tells you, you know, don't tighten them, that one down until you get them all started, you know, just something that just, it's, it's so useful, so helpful, it'll stick with you in the future. Uh, makes life so much easier, a joy. And so I just really feel like this is a, a, a series and really just a set of messages that is a, really about one thing. And I'm going to describe that here in a moment, um, but really that will be a, that kind of a blessing. It's an instruction. And really, I, I say that it's something that um, it's not new. Uh, it's something that, but yet it, it, it can very easily be lost. I was having a conversation recently about, uh, I think with my brother Jake, about technology. Um, and we've had this conversation uh, many different times, not just me and him, but just in general. That how we have so much technology and so much information, but it's held in our phone or held on a computer, not in our in our heads anymore, like how to how to make something work. You know, it's funny that there's like a huge mar- There was a huge market for like homesteading and how to can. <laughs> you know what canning is? Canning is like where you grow vegetables that you don't. They don't just come out of like they don't just grow at Walmart. You know, <laughs> they come from the ground from a seed, and then you take them and you put them into a store and you put them in a pantry or or you know a root. Go on. Seller, any uh, anybody have a root seller here? One person has a root seller, two maybe. Anybody have any roots in their root seller? No, we don't have any potatoes. My mom and dad they have a, uh, they just moved into a place and in, uh, in Minnesota they've been there just over a year and the, their garage is built into the side of the hill. And so it's a cement wall all the way up. And, and so they had, they loved the garden and they had potatoes and sweet potatoes and squ- winter squash, which is like your acorn squash, your butternut squash. Okay. And they had it in the, in the, in the garage and the garage didn't freeze all year because it's built into the ground. So you have that geothermal uh, heating, but yet it's cold. And so their potatoes and all of that, it was like, my mom was like, it's like I have my own root cellar. <laughs> she was so excited. And I love that. But there's things that can very easily be lost that once were known. And I remember Brother Hagen said this. He said, the move of the Spirit in one generation can be lost because it's just not passed down. And we, we've talked about this how um, just a few weeks ago, how there arose a generation, the Bible says, that did not know the Lord or his works. After those that had been in the wilderness, they had passed away. Those that had, had seen you know, God you know, watch the, the, the walls fall right, of Jericho and take over this promised land. Just the goodness of God. They seen that they saw the Red Sea split. They said, like all of these things. And yet it says now there arose a generation that did not know the Lord God. And, and so they're, they're, it's really simple for things to, to be lost because they're not passed down. Um, and we just think because well, we know them, then maybe the next generation will know them. But that's not the case. Um, Dalton, I want to give you a verse that's, that's there, but it's further down. Uh, Luke 2, 9 through 11. I only have Luke 2, 9, 9 up there. But I wanted to start out today. And I, uh, this is the, the, the title of the series is, is Brighter and Brighter, A Light in the Darkness. And you have maybe heard, it's sure getting dark out there. Right? It's sure getting dark out there. And, uh, and, and, that, and that's true. There's a lot of darkness. There's a lot of uh, crazy things going on. But my, my heart uh, to, today would be that, that what we would see and what would, the, the light would be uh, our story. And light would be what we see and what we be. 
or what we would be to this in this earth and in this place. And where there's darkness in your life and darkness in my life, um, where, where, where I see like a picture of hopelessness, that the, it, that could not remain because light would come. And light would come and it would be brighter and brighter. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture, uh, and this is going to be the uh, base scripture for this whole, this whole series, uh, Proverbs 4.18, which says, The path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. It actually says, The path of the righteous um, shines like the dawn, like the beginning, and brighter and brighter until full noon day. And so we're going to look at that here t- today. But I wanted to, to start by, in a sense, priming this, this idea in this um, this picture of the awe of God, this, this, this awareness of, of, of the glory or brightness. Every t- everywhere you see God show up, um, you see brightness. Everywhere. Uh, darkness, you'll see syn- synonymous with uh, the devil. And yet light you see as the light of the world. It, it, the light, dar- darkness can't comprehend it. It can't overtake it. Where light comes, darkness has to flee. You see this in John chapter 1. It's, it's, so everything, in, whenever you see the glory of, of God, you see this great light shine. And light is great. And light is power, but is, light's also powerful. So sometimes we hear about darkness, and even in this time, there, you know, there's things that come in ebbs and waves. Let me just make this very clear. Um, you, to cast out any demon, all you need is the name of Jesus. Okay? You don't have to get into some blah, 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 and some you know, spiritual euphoria to, or you know, get yourself up onto a level. No, you've already been raised in Christ to seat with him in heavenly places, far above all principalities, okay? far above. Okay, so so just just know this. You don't have to work yourself into a place of authority, and 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 they don't they they, they really don't need the attention um, that maybe uh, that maybe the or, or bandwidth of our life, of the space of our life. Uh, they're really more just an annoyance, okay, than they are an authority, okay. But um, so I want to just uh, and here's here's what I want to bring to you or my um, awareness. The power of light, okay? And so as we look through this, because so many times we, we, we don't think of light as being fearful or as being like, wow. But look at this, and in this, this, this passage, you'll see this, this, same, this same feel happen many times uh, in Scripture. And it says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory, somebody say glory, the glory of the Lord, the goodness of God, Shown, what did it do? It shined. It was bright. That word shone means brightness. It was like, ah, like, like somebody had a flashlight and just, you know, what are you doing? Right in your, I mean, just, but, but immensely greater than a flashlight. It says the, the, it sh- all the way around them. Like, like the light of God is not like, um, have you ever been uh, maybe in a, the, like a moment where you have a flash? Like a flash, like the other night I was welding and it was right at dark and I couldn't see to line up my metal with my helmet on because it was that dark. So I had lined it up and I was dropping my helmet, right? But when I went to, was lining it up, somehow my, my rod, my, my, my welding rod made contact with metal while I'm trying to, my eyes are fully dilated trying to see because it's dark. You know, and I'm trying to get that lined up just right. And somehow my, I, my, it didn't stick there. It stuck to this metal. And I'm telling you, poof, it was bright. And it was bright and it didn't just shine right there. It shined around me. You know what I mean? Like when it says it sh- shined around them, it, you know, I can shine light. And I could, in a sense, if you shined a flashlight, I could do bunny ears and the light would you wouldn't come around, you could see the shape of bunny ears. Let me tell you, where God shines, you, there's no bunny ears. You know what I'm saying? Like when, it, when, when there's, no, you, there's no like, ha, 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 he lights up the shadows. So here, and, and so like the shadows in my life, where, where the, the dark places in my life, when the glory of God is present, the goodness of God is present, there's nothing too hard, nothing too dark. Like it's just, it just eliminated. And it says this, it says, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were what? They were terrified. Like, whoa. Like, like, wow, what a, there's, you know what they sensed? Power. Power. 
And there's power in his presence. There's power in his presence. And his power, the next verse says this, but the angel said unto them, but don't be afraid. They were terrified. He said, but don't be afraid because this power is for your good. This power is for your good. He said, I bring you some good news. I'm, I'm bringing you to the gospel. I'm bringing you uh, Luke 4. The, 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 I'm bringing you this good news that will cause great joy for all people. So the glory of God, the power of God, that which is, is terrifying ability. Terrifying ability, he says, is, is good news for you and for all people. There is terrifying ability with God. Like, if God shows up, Right? Like when God shows up, there's, and he goes on and says, and today in the town of David, a savior has been born. This is the message. This is the message that was so bright and so wonderful and so, in his, and at the same time, so powerful that it brought terror, like that he had to say, don't be afraid. You'll find that this is what happens when an, even just an angel, having been in the presence of God, comes and shows up. That, that's the first message because they sense the glory, sense the power the same way with Moses came down from the mountain he had to put over his face or when the mountain transfiguration, there was having been just, just the reflection or the radiance like when you would heat up metal and it glows orange for, for a season until it cool or, or for a moment or a span of time until it cools off, you could see the glory of God, just the reflection. And he says, today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So I want to draw our attention this morning just to and, and have an expectation of, of hope or, or, or a picture of glory. And we're going to talk about glory for a few weeks. We're going to talk about glory. And you're saying, what's glory? We don't know. We sing about glory. We, we say, oh, you know, glory to God. What does that mean? Like, or is it just praise? Is it, what, what is the glory? We're going to talk about the glory of God. We're going to talk about uh, the, the, his manifest presence. We're going to talk about for, for you and my, uh, for your family, my family, for, for our businesses, for our household, for the path that which our feet is to walk. We're going to talk about his goodness that's to shine and desi desire to shine for you and me and how it comes about. There's a path that you and I, uh, ha ha because of Jesus, shines bright. And not just bright, that same word shine, brighter and brighter, like whew, brighter and brighter. So though it's getting darker and darker, get, how is it for you? Brighter and brighter. So we're going to look at that because so right now, you, you know, you might say, oh, brighter and brighter because that's what the Bible says. But that's not what I believe because that's what I see. So but if you and I, and so to, we're just going to unpack some things to where you can say, oh, yeah, this is what I expect. This is what I hope for. No, not hope like I wish, but hope as a confident expectation of good. That you would actually have a confident expectation of good. That hope, hope that you could wait patiently because you have a confident expectation of good. You know there's this picture of hope. A picture of hope. And so um, I, I want to just define um, the glory of God. Just a few words that I was just writing. At glory, when you think about glory, when you see it, you see bright, brightness. You see power. You see fearful. You see tremble. You know, sometimes we tremble at the problem and not the glory. You see good. You see presence. You see fullness. We're the glory of God. So this is what we're talking about concerning in your family. I want you to see and get a, an expectation and a hope because the earth is to be filled with the glory of God. Well, where's that found? Well, that's found in Habakkuk. How many of you ever have heard of Habakkuk? More than just Habakkuk chapter 2. It's, there's three chapters in Habakkuk, and it is in this season where, where this prophet is crying out to God, and he's not hearing any from, from, from God. So in chapter 2, he says, I'm going to get up on the wall, and I'm going get to uh, get something, and I'm going to be ready to write whatever the Lord tells me. So I'm listening, God, say something. And in Habakkuk chapter 2, he says, I'm going to tell you something. Now get this tab, but make it plain so that what I'm going to tell you, it, everyone can run and, and read it on the run. He says, though it waits... For the, uh, it, though it tarries, wait for it, wait for it, because it'll come right on time. And it's really this, this type and shadow and this prophecy about the redemption of Israel. 
And so in, the, in chapter, so you have, I'm not hearing from God in chapter one, to I heard from God, this is what God said in chapter two, to chapter three, it sure is dark outside. The space in between, right? The space in between what, what, what you desire, right? What the promise and, and the fulfilling of that promise. So I haven't heard God's saying something. <laughs> we quote these things all the time. And then Habakkuk 3 is like, wow, it's just like. But he ends chapter 3 with a statement that is extremely powerful that I believe that it will help us. And, and we're going to get to that t- today. Um, and, and so I just uh, I want to give you these, these scriptures um, as we talk about light. I want to hit darkness real quick. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. And you'll see this is the season in which we're in. And we are talking about a light in the darkness. That's you. A light in the darkness. That's him. That's Christ in you. The hope of. Ooh. So there's a confident expectation because Christ in you, there is hope or an expectation, a a, a convincing, waiting for glory, power, brightness, tremble, at the Mufasa, ooh. I, I, I love that analogy because things tremble at the name of Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're, we're going to get to that in the, in, in the coming weeks, but there is, there is something about Jesus and the blood of Jesus. We're going to talk about pleading the blood of Jesus because that is your victory. And pleading the blood of Jesus sometimes... Yeah, the Lord spoke this to my heart just like this. He said, we plead the blood of Jesus, and you guys, we, you, you, you plead the blood of Jesus. And you plead it as a covering rather than your justification and, and a release and a sentencing. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead it as a covering rather than my release and my sentencing, which is good. I've been now sentenced to the glory that's my sentencing. That's my, that's my reward. The, but by the blood, it's not just, oh, protect me while I plead the blood. You're like, what does even pleading the blood mean? Well, we're going to talk about that. Just not today. All right. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This is, but uh, mark this. Uh, there will be terrible times in the last days. And this is in the, in the time in which we're living. Just so you all know. Um, uh, a team night, we talked about this, Revelation twenty two twelve. 12. He says, uh, behold, I'm coming quickly and my reward is with me. And that is a fact. Yeah. It's a fact. And people, he said, this is what it's going to be like. He said, people will be lovers of themselves. I love uh, Joseph Morris. He says, uh, I mean, you never would have thought that a camera would be used to take a picture of yourself. I mean, matter of fact, we got selfie sticks. Like, like what is this? Hey, you know, like, what? Like, can you imagine, what are you doing, honey? Right? Like, she is, like, back then you would have heard, wow, that is vanity. Right? You would have heard. But now it's more like, here, here, have a filter so I can look more beautiful. You know, this is for real. Okay? Because it's all about measuring your self-worth. Whether, you, whether we realize that or not, that, there, there's behind things. You know, like if you would peel the onion, what's the core? Right? Um, anyway, lover of themselves, lover, or, or even just presenting yourself because you think if I can get this, then I can get that. Like my, even the, the, the Bible talks about how it's the Lord who raises up. It's, I'm, we're going to get to this place of just rest, just a place of rest, trusting in God instead of trusting in my own strength. You know, where we're weak, where we're weak, you know, we rather than we're going to get to this in the end of this message, but rather than getting into this place of like rejoicing in our weakness, we try to shore up our weakness. Where he said, I rejoice in my weakness because in my weakness, your grace is made strong. You know, God's grace is so much greater, so much wider, so much stronger, so much surer than your strength to sure up a weakness. You know, you could sure up a weakness for this debt, but it only lasts for a moment. But his grace is, has a supply for you and me that celebrating in my weakness rather than me trying to become strong. And right, it's so amazing, right in that same passage, he's talking about not being a lover of money, right right above that. Because so many times we think if I could just have a little bit more money, then I would, then what? Then what? Then you need more. And then what? You need more. And then when you can't solve it with money, then what? 
Because you know what? The majority of the problems can't be solved with money. Look at Hollywood. All right, let's keep going here. He says this, he lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, lovers of evil, tre- treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Next verse. Having a form of godliness but denying its power, having nothing, he says now, have nothing to do with such people. This is in Timothy, he's talking about in the last days. It's going to be dark. Okay, okay, great. And then it goes on to verse 13, I believe is what I gave you the next one of 2 Timothy 3.13. Um, let's hit, hit that real quick. It just talks again about darkness. Maybe you have it. Maybe. It says, while evil duels and imposters will grow from what? Bad to worse, man. It's getting bad. It's getting worse out there. He's like, this is what we hear. It's just like, man, it's just going to hell in a handbasket. Well, that's not, not to be the path that you're to be walking on and not the, the light in the path that you're to carry and bring people along that same path. Okay? Deceive, he said, bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You're not supposed to be deceived. We're not supposed to be deceived. You know, you, it's easy to be deceived where there's darkness. Okay, so, but we're talking again about light. So, Proverbs 4.18, let's put this up. This is our text. This, this is also our Bible memory verse for this week. Proverbs 4.18, I'm going to reiterate that. Uh, reading your Bible, reiterating that. We have a, we're, we're reading through the New Testament. We're in John right now. Um, and so, I'm actually only in John 12. So, I'm a day behind, or maybe right up today. Um, but I'll tell you, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, we're almost through the Gospels. And it's easy to catch up or to just pick up right where you're at. Right? Don't, don't, like, hear it for yourself because the, the, the teacher, God Himself will show up and give you exactly what you need every day. It's so powerful. So you can get that on the app. Anyway, here's our Bible memory verse for the week Proverbs 14. Now, the path of the righteous is like the morning sun, shining ever brighter till the full, full light of day. What we're going to talk about today is the path. So as I was looking at this, uh, and as uh, I wasn't even looking at this, I was like, Lord, what do you want to talk about? What do you want to teach on? What do you want to? And he said, I, I just kept on here and talk about my glory. Talk about my glory. Because I was uh, coming out of Easter and for months ahead of time, I'm thinking, what can I say to the people that would be the, the, the you know, just, and I, I shared this last week about how, you know, the, really what people, what we need is we don't need another word. We need to address our will and, and, you know, and recognize that there is a clock and like, okay, but what is it that I need to hear about in the glory of God? So I, I as I was pers- per, um, just at, Asking the Lord, what do, show me, show me what you want me to speak on concerning the glory, your glory, your glory. And so I was like three weeks in in my mind, right? Or in my note, like here's where I'm going to be. And then this scripture came up, and then it was like this is the foundation of it all. And it began to just break down. And I've, I, this scripture, I've written this in a hundred cards, in people's in people's cards, because this is a declaration. This is a, this is a, a, a promise about a path. For you and me, for the righteous. So we're going to talk this morning about the path. We're going to talk about the righteous. We're going to talk about brightness in the weeks to come. But today we're going to talk about the path. Okay? Uh, but, but it tells us that the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. Let me, let's look at this. Who is the righteous? And we're not going to un, unfold all this, but I have to lay this foundation in order to get to where we're, we're going. 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians 5.21, it tells us about how we've been made the righteousness of God. It says, God made him who had no sin to be sin for, for us. Why? So that in him we might become what? The righteousness of God. So this scripture that we're talking about in, in, in Proverbs 4.18, it's talking about anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord and has received Christ who was made sin for us, as the substitute, as the donor, as the payment for your and my sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God. So, so now the path, the, the path of the righteous, let's look at this here, Romans 5, 9, so you can see it's not just one, script. there's lots of scriptures, we're not going to, uh, but Romans 5, 9, it says, since we have now been justified, how? Okay, so we're going to talk about the, the, the blood See, because the blood is the key to your righteousness. 
The blood is the key to not just your righteousness, but your redemption. It's the key to your victory. I overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony, to the, the pleading of the blood. Have you pleaded the blood of, of Jesus over your children or over your family or over your marriage or over, have you, have you, have you in other words, let's say it this way, have you declared the blood of Jesus to, over your child, over, over your family, over your finances, which is not just a covering, but it is a testimony. It is a, it is a um, uh, what am I trying to say? It's the, uh, the, you know, the ruling, the verdict, the, the sentencing, the, this is, over your, I'm telling you, the blood of Jesus. You know, people used to apply the blood all the time. The church here. You might have used to apply the blood and put your faith in the blood. Like continually, like, like just say, Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus over that. And you have some ache and you're, instead of Googling and figuring out what that is and trying to sure up your weakness, you just you apply the blood. And, and, and Father, I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has washed me, cleansed me, and took, take, took care of the works of sin and all of its consequences. Now, the wages of sin is death, but the wages that are, are for me is the gift of life. Yes. Father, thank you for, I just plead the, so what, this is, your, your my battle is not a natural battle. It's a battle, uh, it's not a natural battle. It's a spiritual battle. And, and your, your words and my words, they, they, they release and they send even spiritual, it's, it's, it's how, it's what, it's my testimony that, that whether I realize it or not, it's positioning me or it's, 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 it's either binding me or releasing me. It's, it's giving somebody authority or tying the hands of God. You can give Satan authority and tie God's hands at the same time because of this. So, so what, what does that mean? The path of the righteous, the path of the righteous justified through his blood. How much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? We, we are righteous because of Jesus. Jesus has made, we are righteous, we've been made righteous because of the blood of Jesus. And so our faith and, and our testimony must be about the blood. And we need to be talking about that more often. You know, it's funny. I remember uh, probably, um, oh, shoot, probably, it's probably been eight or ten years ago now. Uh, time flies. But I remember going to this, um, this conference, right? And, and it seemed like this, the, the church, as the church grew, there was this charismatic uh, renewal, like, or just like where you saw this, just God uh, just building churches like super fast in the early 90s, late 80s, early 80s, late 80s, 90s, up to two. And then it hit like 1997. And I was just a young whippersnapper. Right, I got filled with the Holy Spirit, evidence speaking in tongues in 1995. So burned alive in 95. So I was probably in ninth grade at this time. And I remember um, we were at a, we. I went to a church. It was a large church, but I remember all of a sudden now there was these conferences. Everyone was going to conferences, and these conferences were all about how to make your church big like the other church. And then just a few a few years later, we got these things called iPhones and Facebook and comparison game, right? And then social, uh, the social world and the comparison of church, you had pastors dropping out. You had pastors doing all kinds of crazy thing because they wanted to be as good as the next guy and all this crazy that was going on anyway. And so there's conferences after conferences so you can get better. And I'm not saying we shouldn't get better. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't steward the gifts, but I am saying that you and I are to do what God's asking us to do, not comparing what somebody else to do. Drive what you're supposed to drive because you like it instead of what they drive. Listen, like, Forget, who cares? Oh, you know, I don't, as we were having this conversation, you should get some Lululemon. And Evan's like, uh, I'm not spending no whatever on no Lululemon. I, these, what did you call them? Like fake dupes? Okay. They got these dupes, whatever those are. There's now this dupe brand. I think dupes just mean the generic brand. But um, of, of Lululemon. Because I, I got to have the Lou on there, whatever it is, a lemon. What is, I don't even know what's on there. <laughs> Listen, I don't mind wearing Walmart clothes or whatever. I just, I don't care. Who cares? Who cares? Robbed of joy because of somebody else. It's sick. Anyway, 
And I remember being at this conference, and I remember, in, and it wasn't, it was in good heart and good faith, but they were talking about how, you know, we plead the blood of Jesus over you, and da 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 and they don't even know what in the heck that means. So, you know, if we're going to reach the lost, blah, 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 we got we to relate to the lost, and da 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 and I'm like, maybe they need to hear about the blood. <laughs> Instead of wondering, like, well, this is a blood mess, like this, all, this is everything that we're here about today is about the blood. This is a blood covenant. Yes, amen. amen. It's the blood. So when we sing about the blood, we should sing about the blood. And because it, there had to be a payment in, with the blood. And so there was like this don't talk about the blood. Legitimately. And Jesus, you remember when Jesus said, you're going to eat my flesh and you're going to drink my blood? And a bunch of people left. And he said, are you leaving too? He said, no, Lord. The disciples, you carry the very words of life. They recognized that life, even in that word, there was life in that word of, of the blood. Now, um, so here we go. So, uh, so um, Habakkuk 3.19. No, 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 no. Habakkuk 2. 14. Uh, whatever, I, don't, I don't have that one written here. Just out of my memory. 2, 14 maybe? At the end of, yeah. It says, for the earth shall, this is what I was talking about earlier. The earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And the earth will be filled with the knowledge. They'll know of the glory. They'll know of the power. They'll know of the brightness. They'll know of the tremble. They'll know. And this is, he's prophesying or he's writing down what he's hearing from God about an appointed time, about this expected vision. And the earth would be filled with the glory of God as the water covered the sea. You know that's how it's supposed to be for you and me? Did you know he's coming back for what kind of a church? A glorious church. Hmm. So though it's getting darker, you know, I hear people talk, well, there's going to be a lot falling away. And this is all about that scripture about the rapture. People because it's catching away. Okay, or a falling away. People are like, well, people got to fall away if Jesus is going to come back. However, he's coming back for a glorious church. You know, one of the things about glory, it's fullness. You know, his church will be full. Hello. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. Filled with the glory of God. Ephesians 6, uh, 6, 15. So now, now, all right, so now here we're going to talk today. We're going to talk about the path. So, uh, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. Now the path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. Right? path of the righteous shines brighter and brighter. Ever brighter till the full light of day. We're fixing to come into some vacation time. Summertime. Love the kids get out of school. That kind of thing. Some of you might have plans to go on a vacation. I love the summertime. I love going on vacation with my kids. I love, I've been to Hawaii a couple times. I love that. I love the mountains. I love, I love just getting out. So I, I celebrate that when, when people get to go. I have some pictures um, of some of some maybe some places you might be going on vacation this year. Uh, three pictures, and I want you to see them. How many of you would like to go? This is uh, a you can hike down here to your own private beach in Hawaii. That, I mean, come on, how many? Raise your hand, right? This is actually Mexico, okay, on the border. But how about Mexico? It just I mean, you're talking private beach. You know, wristbands, right? Just hike that. All you got to do is get down to that spot. Okay, next one. That might not be your thing. You're like, I don't like sand. Maybe you're just like, I just, oh, the country. This is a setting in Europe. You're like, I want to go to Europe and see those wheat fields. This kind of reminds me of Gladiator, you know, like walking through the wheat field. You know, come on, guys, you see in the, can you see it, right? Okay, Maximus, really, oh, okay. So you can kind of see it, but they cut the wheat, right? But how many of you know, like, that looks pretty great, Looks pretty, you know, Tuscan, doesn't it? Tuscany, you know. All right, um, they've got another one. Maybe that's not your thing either. Maybe you just would just like to go and see the mountains. God, that's just like wow. You're like, yeah, the mountains are my thing. You know, one of the things that you'll notice in every one of those things. Um, so, hey, Jody and Ben, I thought you're on the front row here. Well, which one would be your thing? The first one, beach, right? First one, so Mexico, Mexico, tropical desert island beach. All right, come on up here. Come on up here. So um, what we don't have is Mexico, but I wanted to give you a chance to go to Mexico and your own tropical beach. I don't have a beach, but I got tacos for life. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. Please stand over there. <sighs> tacos for life. Oh, you can go a little further. Um, 
But the place in which you now stand is holy ground, so please remove your shoes. <clears throat> so we're going to go with a path. Don't worry, they're so clean. All right. So oftentimes we get our eyes fixed on the path instead of the picture that the path leads us to. If you put those pictures back up there, you will have noticed you weren't looking at the path. But every one of us, you know what we like to look at? We like to look at the path. All the things that are, tell me what's wrong in your life. You could give me a list. Tell me what's right. Okay. So, um, come on. Come on to the path. Oh, go ahead and hold hands. This is, this is, hold on, hold on. This is the promise of God right here. <laughs> Fulfillment. Listen, you, you, how, <laughs> listen, there was a time we ran on these, and I know you grown, it, grown up, but now, together, together, this is, it, this is the, the path. Did you know the path? It, everything is not just smooth, but did you know there, there is the picture that shines bright unto the fullness, the fullness, and it is the fullness, and that which is before that Jesus fixed his eyes on, even through the path, so that he could run and kick. I'm, t- I'm telling you, it matters where your eyes are fixed and that they're looked unto, shining unto the fullness, the picture, instead of eyes fixed on the rocks. Otherwise, you don't get the tacos. Yes. <laughs> She'll do it for the tacos. <laughs> tacos, y'all. Come on. So... <laughs> it kind of it, it it's kind of rough but there's joy here hey yeah take the taco you don't have to walk on the rocks back thank you yes thank you you know this is the truth this is the truth now one of the things go ahead and put those shoes back on and come on and here let me actually can I have that card back let's just try this um Come back up here. Now, now you're going to get the tacos. Come on, on, come on over here and walk the path. Was that, that was painless. Yeah. Okay. So it matters, thank you. It matters what's on your feet. It matters what's on your feet. It matters. Okay. So, you know, we don't think about this. But yet, we went to Hawaii a few years back, and one of the things in this book it it really highlights is people don't think about this, but what's really important is you're going to need some good good shoes. Okay. You need some good shoes. What shoes are the shoes that you and I are to be wearing? Hmm. Shod. Shod. Put on. Shod. Rod. Right, Rod? Shod, Rod. What does it mean to shot? It means they're tied on. It means they're fit. It means they're fit to you. It means you're not trying to wear somebody else's shoes. Because every one of those paths would not be enjoyable. We saw these pictures. Would not be enjoyable if you didn't have the right shoes on. Can you imagine climbing that mountain or going up there and walking that path? It'd be like, oh my Lord, how much further? And you couldn't step onto a soft carpet, you know, to this is a real thing. This is a very, very real thing. So let's look at this. Let's look at this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 15. Because um, <clears throat> Jesus made peace. This is the good news that he came with through his blood, right? He says this, And your feet fitted with the readiness, the completeness that comes from the gospel of peace. Let me, let me say this. Okay. The good news of peace. So there is there are there are there are shoes that you and I are to have and that is good news shoes. And it's not just about carrying a message to somebody else, but it's you and I understanding that the, the gospel came to me and the good news came to me and this good news was a, go- a gospel of wholeness, peace and completeness. And if you were to go to Luke chapter 4, you would see that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Jesus said, he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set the captive free, to preach recovery of sight to the blind, the year of the Lord, jubilee. I mean, everything, if, let me ask you this. Concerning what, whatever's going on in your life, you'll find that Luke chapter 4 will take care of that. The gospel will take care of that. So if I have the shoes on 
that are shoes of peace or wholeness, completeness. Let me just define this real quick. Um, peace, uh, he tells us this, uh, join together, okay? This is a, there's a joining together. The, the gospel of peace. The, the word uh, peace there is not shalom, it's irene, which means all these pieces are joined together. Did you know you were once separated? I was once separated, but the good news of the gospel of peace came to me, and they're fit for me. And Jesus came to me because he was looking for me, because he loves me. And so guess what? I'm joined together, what? On this path, no matter what's going on, guess who I'm walking with? I've been joined together. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about the path because of, what, because of what I have on. And what I have on is I have him with me. I'm walking with him, tied with him. So this is important. That I understand, remember, what shoes do I have on? Do I have on the good news shoes? Or do I have on the bad news shoes? This is huge. Yeah, okay, the picture. Because remember the picture. Because what happens is, is when I have on the bad news shoes, all of a sudden, I don't see the beach. I see the snakes that might be in the trees. And all of a sudden, my testimony is not one of what was and was to be. It matters if I have on good news shoes. What is the good news? It's the, the bond or the togetherness. How God's taken, taken that which was separated and brought together. And him, in him is the light and the life, the glory of man, the power, the, all of the ability in him, with him, through him, by him. How is it going to be? He, and, and what happens is, is the picture, even if you stumbled, even if there's something bad going on, you can, you can realize this. And my God is going to cause all things. Why? My God, he's causing all things to work together for good. So now I, I got this good news shoes on. All of a sudden I have this strength to, to carry on, but it's not in my own strength. It's in my partner's strength. Go back to footprints on the sand. How many of you have seen that? Thank you, Lord. Fitted, strapped on, readiness, the foundation, the firm footing, the, the preparation, the gospel, the good news, the pe uh, gospel of peace, joined together, all essential parts. Most fears come from not having the pieces or the parts that you think you need to pull it off. Maybe it's short on money, maybe it's short on health, maybe it's short on time, maybe it's short on... But, <laughs> thank you, Lord. So... Hmm. Go ahead and put up Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6. Hmm. You know, when things are bright, I'm light. When things are bright, I'm not only, my, I'm, 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 I don't, <sighs> there's a rest. There's not a heaviness. There's a lightness. When, it's, when, when, I, when I see according to the light of the gospel, when I see that the path that I, God's bright. See, here's the thing. We get our eyes so fixed on the path so often when it's not about the path, it's about the, where this path is leading us. Nobody looked at those pictures and thought, oh, what, look at those rocks. They said mountains. They saw Europe. They saw, they saw, you saw a beach, blue water. It's not, a, it's not about the ground. It's about where he's, where, you're, where he's taking you. Shines brighter and brighter unto. Okay? It says, keep your life, uh, this is where he says, um, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Next verse. So say, we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid of what he can do unto me. So all the way along, he's like, guess what? Here's, the, here's this piece. Here's these shoes. The joining together with him. I'm not leaving. It's hard. Yeah, but this is hard. Hey, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, listen, whatever you're facing, he's not, he's not leaving. He's not going anywhere. This is important for us to remember. It, that he's, not, he's not going anywhere, but he's, he, he, and not only that, he says, I'll be your helper. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. There, I got power to take care of the problem. Thank you, Lord. So, um, so what's, so here's the thing. It's great. I got shoes on. It's 
Eeyore, <laughs> drudge. You know, we got too many Christians drudging through life, drudging through work. <sighs> got to go home and make dinner. <sighs> got to do this. <sighs> Churches tonight. <sighs> Tonight's night of prayer. <sighs> Sunday morning. I haven't had a break. <sighs> That's not the way God designed it. No. Go to put up there Psalms 18, 28 through 33. I love this. This is the psalm that David had written. And um, we're not going to, it would really be wonderful for you to read Psalms 18. It's about after one of his victories that God had given him. It's just what a testimony of God as, not just as um, a lamb, but as a warrior and as a fire and as a fighter. And as a, so you just see this in the beginning, all about his power, where you see that terror, you know, that or just that, just like, wow. Right. But he goes on to say, he says, you, Lord, you kept my lamp burning and my, my God turns my darkness into light. So what so what's happening is because I'm walking with him, I'm not there's not a drudgery. I'm like, oh, man, look at that. There's, there's a change. So he's what's happening. And he goes on. He goes, with your help, I advanced against the troop. So he didn't say anything that there wasn't a big rock in the way or this big boulder in the way. I mean, shoot, we went to Hawaii last year, best trip of our life, um, other than when we were there with our kids, of course, right? No, this one was just me and her. And I remember we, we walked down to multiple beaches where there was nobody there. But we had some shoes on, and we had to hike over some rocks. Like 15-minute hike, backpack, like sweating by the time you got there. But I'm telling you, when you got there, it was just unbelievable. He says, with your help, he said, I can advance a troop. With my God, I can scale any wall. Is there a wall? Guess what? With God's help. And he's not leaving. So there's, there's something about magnifying God or magnifying the problem. This is huge because it keeps you and me aware of that I have a help at all times. It says, as for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. Next one. For, he, for who is God besides the Lord and who is the rock except our God? This is that, talking about that foundation, that solid, those shoes. You can trust the, that, that foundation. The shoes are the foundation. The, the shoes, you, your trust in the good news is the foundation. Like, I got a shield of faith. <laughs> you better go back because you're not going to want to try to make a sand if you don't have some good news shoes on. You're going to grow real weary real quick because that shield's a little heavy. It's the foundation. This is the foundation. Is what are what's on your feet? It is God who arms me with what? So He's giving me strength. We just Philippians two thirteen. It is God who's at work in you, both to will and to do according to His good pleasure, and keeps my way how secure. Thank you, Lord. It is God who arms your strength, keeps my way secure. Verse 33, this is what I want to get to, and then we're going to look at Habakkuk 3.19. He makes my feet like that of a deer, and I love that scripture. Because I like deer, right? He causes me to stand on the heights. Right? Maybe your translation might say hind's feet, or that, it's that of a deer. Now, a deer, here's what a deer doesn't, a deer is known for its gracefulness. If you have a garden and you have a fence up, that doesn't matter. Because <laughs> it's able to scale any wall. I remember having a food plot and trying to fence off all these soybeans I was trying to grow down, at the, down in the bottom. Oh, let me tell you, all 60 deer were inside that pen. It's like, that was where they stay, you know. And like that of a deer. So it's, it, it, there, there's something about how a deer walks. But not only how a deer walks, they, they walk, they, they, they can't be withheld. You can't trap a deer. Of course, I did catch one in our parking lot that was fenced in over here. Year, this is a few years ago. They used to have deer in this fence over here. Well, the guy let him out because he was tired of people sneaking in there and doing stuff to him. So he let him out. So they were kind of tame. Well, there was this little fork and horn, and he was in the parking lot here. Well, this is when I was painting, right? So I had my, my, my truck and my paint trailer, and I would, always wanted to own a deer. Okay, especially a buck. So I had an extension cord and I had an enclosed paint trailer and I thought I can catch that deer. 
So I had Trent, my partner in crime, and I said, you take the end of this cord and, and make a big loop as a 100-foot extension cord. So he made this loop, and we pushed it down toward where the basketball courts are. And then I said, now begin to walk around. The deer's standing there and kind of walking around. And I made a line for it, literally jumped on it, tackled the deer. This is a true story. <laughs> Tackled the deer, and he's swinging his head, and I get him by his haunches and his front legs, and I got my head against his neck because he's swinging. I said, get the trailer doors, Trent! Get the trailer doors! And I threw it in the trailer, and then I put it in my chicken coop. For real. So I know a thing about deer. <laughs> this really happened. Anyway, and so he hung around for a while. Uh, then I had to let him out because, anyway, get back to it. All right. <laughs> he makes my feet like a, that of a deer. He causes me to stand on the heights. Um, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 19. Talk, talk, again, talking about um, when you watch a deer, there's, they, they're, they don't seem to get tired. Like if you're hunting a deer and you're trying to cut it off or it takes off running, you're not catching it. They're just that quick. There, there's a freshness. There's a buoyancy, like just, whew. like I, I've, you've watched them like they're on a full gate. There's a barbed wire fence and a ditch and a road. And they're like, whoop, 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 whoop. Yeah. wow. Like how in the world did they don't know that there could be a pothole there. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're just, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. that's, that's how God wants to make your or my feet. Yeah. Like that we walk. So this is kind of maybe like, what if, what if, I got one son by the name of Caleb. This is how he walks. Hey, guys. How are you? Never have a bad day. I love that. Matter of fact, his name means, Caleb means that of a different spirit. Hmm. I love that. I love that. It, it changes, it, it, it's something that changed our family. It's seeing a different spirit. And Habakkuk 3.19 says, The sovereign Lord, he is my strength. He makes my feet like that of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. You know, sometimes the heights, we think of the heights as just being great, easy things. Sometimes the heights are the scary places. And it's not just a deer, the, that, that of hind's feet, like the feet of a deer or hind's feet. It could be, if you've ever watched, um, maybe in, in uh, National Geographic, you've seen these goats that are like, they're not a deer, but like a goat, and they're able to scale that rock. And somehow they're able to hang on a ledge. But not just hang, but make a scent. In, where, where below is the wolves or the lions trying to get them, and they just... Do, 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 do. And if you ever watch them, you're like, how in the world? They're just. I mean, it reminds me of like the, the, the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, Claymation, when he's learning to fly. What if we would learn to fly? What if we would learn that we have one that's given us strength and not only given us strength, like someone giving you a coin? He, does, he doesn't just come and give us Oh, here's some money. Here's your strength. No, he is our strength. He comes alongside. Doesn't just come alongside. He comes within and gives us the strength to, to walk, to leap, to bound the wall, whatever it might be, because, I, because, because he's able, because Christ in me is the hope of the glory. Listen, I have one in me and with me that no matter the wall, no matter the, no matter the problem, no matter what, and you're like, oh, this just, that all just seems just like make believe, or you're just talking about being optimistic, glass, you know, half full instead of half empty. No, I'm talking about the gospel and the good news that came to us. And if you and I would have and, and have a recollection, if God just showed up, woo, here's what you would have, he would say to you, don't be afraid. Because I'm bringing to you some good news, some great joy, and the Savior has showed up today. And you would say, whoo, and you wouldn't be doubting if the Savior had showed up because light showed up, because the brightness showed up, and now there's terror and there's tremble and ability at the light instead of the darkness. 
And this is not a half full. This is, we serve the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, the, the one who sits on a throne, the one who says, the one who has a voice of many waters, eyes of fire, one who's not limited in any way. It's not just glass half full theology. This is the truth of the gospel that needs to make its way back into the church because the earth is to be filled with the glory, the brightness, the power, the tremble of God. And when you see a problem, light be, glory be, power tremble, fullness be. And the path in my marriage, the path for my children, when I plead the blood, the path because of the righteous, I, I declare a verdict. I declare a sentencing over my family that their future, their tomorrow, over their health. It's one of the blood. It's one of the blood. It's not half full. This is not optimism. This is actually the good news of the gospel. That's actually what this is. And you know, we've made God this big. And when we're weak, we try to sure up rather than celebrate where he can be strong. I think we rob God of a lot of glory. Do you know, that's the first place we go, not the last. I could be about his business. I could, I could finish the race. I could run because I, because I wouldn't be, I, I, because of the feet that I had, the shoes that I have on, I know what he's calling me into. I fixed something else before me. What? His glory. His power. Uh, he's not leaving. He's not forsaken. I'm your helper. I have a helper. Oh, I have a helper. Father, thank you. You'll find that in the rocks, you'll worship. You'll worship in the rocks. Instead of grumble or quit. Don't quit. I'm going to put up 2 Corinthians 12, 9. But he said unto me, my grace is sufficient, more than enough for you. For my power is made perfect or complete. Or I want you to think of it like this. Have you ever seen an on-off button? Maybe it's on a weed eater. You might not understand what the line versus the circle means. So the completing of a circuit, the closing of a circuit allows the power to come on. It's the switch. You know the switch to your and my, to, to his power is our weakness? It's the switch. Like in other words, where it's not just me doing it and say, oh well, God can't really get the glory where you, where, where you did it. He said it's made perfect in weakness, made complete in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that what? So that Christ's power may what? Rest on me. The glory of the Lord, the power of God would rest on you. I'm telling you, he, the glory, the path, his grace, and I'm gonna just reiterate this. The grace supply is greater than my ability to trust or and trust to sure up my weakness. The grace supply is greater than my ability and trust to sure up weakness. Boast all the more about weakness, for that is where the power of God rests. Lord, thank you for your power. Lord, you, oh, whew, thank you, Lord. So the path and the picture. What's the picture in your heart today? What's the picture? It can be one of hope. It can be one of fulfillment. It can be one of finish. It can be one of completeness. It can be one of your children serving the Lord. It can be one of, of, of God taking what the enemy meant for evil and just turning it around for good. 
where a problem can turn into a promise. That's the God we serve. Isaiah 40, 31. Wait, hope, look expectantly. See, here's what happens, even concerning the path. I want us to understand that the path that God has us on is not one that's, it's, it's always leading us in a way of rest. He's not driving. This is important for us to remember. He's not a driver. He is one that leads in the way uh, in a way of rest or in a way of where you're ceasing from your own striving in, in what you can only do yourself, but in one where it causes you and me to lean on him, to lean on him. And I, we, But those who hope, those who wait, those who look expectantly unto the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. There's something about waiting. There's something about ultimately this. Those that wait is because you have those good news shoes. You don't have to do something. You don't have to do something about it. You got to. You say, Lord, I thank you for your that you're walking with me. You're leading me uh, upon you, your path, upon for your name's sake, upon the path of righteousness for your name's sake, the way that you would have. Father, I thank you that you're my strength in this walk, all the way. And then the last verse, Romans eight thirty one through thirty four. This is an important one to remember. Romans 8, 31 through 34. What then shall we say in response to all these things? All these rocks or all the, what are we going to say? Oh, God's for me. This is good news shoes. This is good news shoes. This will change, this will change the gripe and the grumble and the groaning, and it'll keep you, for, it'll, it'll, it'll to, to praise and celebration. It'll allow you to, instead of a 40 year journey in a wilderness, it'll take you into a place of provision, a place of promise that you didn't provide for. Well, so what is my response to all these things? If God is for me, God is for me, God is for me. Thank you, Father, that you're working on my behalf. You're for me. You're not, God's for me. You might be, you might be looking for a girlfriend. You can rest. You're for me. Not just a girlfriend, but a, a, a wife that is just like, I couldn't have picked one out better. Whew. God cares about these things. What then shall we say in response to these things? God is for us. Who can be against us? Next verse. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Next verse. Who will bring any charge against those who, whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Verse 34. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and he's also interceding for us. God for us. God with us. Christ with us. Christ for us. God, this is the, the light of the gospel coming to me. The, the power of God in, with me, for me, fighting. This is, this is good news. So I would want you to hear it like this from grandma or grandpa. Honey, you don't have to worry about that. Can you hear grandma saying, honey, you don't need to worry about that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Honey, buddy, you don't need to worry about that. Let me just show you this. Here, look. Yeah, trying to get that wheel, that bolt to go through. Hey, buddy, hey, look, look, look. Just loosen that bolt a little. Don't tighten that one down. Oh, wow, it just went right on. You don't have to worry about that. Because if God's for you, who can be against you? Is that, is that simple? Could it be that simple? Yeah. The glory of God, the goodness of God. Yeah. It's not an idea. It's not. It's the truth. And he who did not spare his own son, how will he not also take care of you in all things? So I just saw today like this lightness, you know, even as we were praying or opening up service, just that one of rest, you know? So I just wanted us to stand today. 
And everything from like what Pastor Evan was talking about this morning, there's cares of relationships or like hurts. Um, there's financial issues. Uh, matter of fact, sometimes those hurts uh, have to have a lot to do with finances. Not only are money fights happen in marriages, they happen with friends. Like, like somebody else got the promotion or somebody else, like, like these kind of things can be very real. But you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be afraid. See, this is where care, care has its strength and its grip and its weight in fear. The greater the fear, the greater the weight. The greater the fear, the greater the weight. And so I just saw today, this is our, I just, let's just close our eyes, not distracted. I just saw us lifting our hands and just placing every care, every concern, health concerns, relationship concerns, finance concerns, our children, and just lifting them up before the Lord. And we, Father, we just say thank you for caring for us. Thank you for good news the gospel that sets me free so that I can run with your light, with your glory to others. I lift before you and I release the cares, the concern, because I know that you're with me. Thank you for filling my mouth and my heart, bringing to my remembrance the good news that you're for me, that you're with me, and that there's nothing too hard for you. Father, fill me with the tremble of your glory. give you honor in Jesus name. Amen. 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 That's been my prayer for the last little bit. Lord, fill us with the, the tremble, the just every problem, every obstacle. If someone comes up to me and says, I've been diagnosed with cancer. My response is one of tremble, not at that name, but at his name in the blood of Jesus. My testimony is the path. I plead the blood of Jesus over this. I plead the blood of Jesus over this. And brightness and future and glory and glory and glory. All the way unto. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's just lift our hands and give him glory one last time. Father, we give you honor today. We say thank you. Thank you for loving us so much. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for uh, bringing to our remembrance everything that you spoke to us. We honor you. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. If you're here today, before we go, if you're here uh, and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, um, right now, uh, I can't even see you from up top. I would love for you to come down front with me. Um, so if that's you, I'm going to wait for you up front, and then I'll talk to you directly before we dismiss. So I'm going to wait for about 15 seconds. If that's you, you got to give your life to Jesus. I'll wait for you right here. You know that you you got to give you get right. The Lord brought you here today. You need to come. I'll wait with, for you right here, and then we'll dismiss. Thank you, Lord. Anyone? Anyone? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know what that means? We gotta go in the highways and the byways. You know, carrying a message. Not just for in the house, but I'll tell you, you pray with people to receive Jesus out of the house. This is where that's where the majority of salvation should be taking place. Not from a pastor uh, giving a message, but from you, the body of Christ, equipped for your works of ministry. Amen. So God bless you. Go be a light this week. We'll see you Wednesday.